Hey man, thanks for doing this. <laughs> no problem. My pleasure. <laughs> good, good, good. Um, let's start all the way at the back, Adrian. Um, I know you're from Penang. I know you've been running Mega Fortress for like a few dozen years, a few a few decades at least. How did you get started in business? Oh, it, interesting. Yep, I'm from Penang, and yeah. uh, actually Penang is a nice place. Yes, uh, I, I like Penang. I I kind of miss Penang yeah. after being away for so many years. Now, doing business, it was it wasn't it wasn't something that uh, nature fact in my uh, life path. It wasn't something that was planned. It wasn't planned. It wasn't planned. Were, were, you, were, were your parents entrepreneurs? Uh, yeah, my dad was. My dad, okay. my dad, my dad runs a uh, a workshop, a uh, car repair maintenance shop. Okay, but none of us decided to take over the business because you know it's it's yeah it's a bit dirty and, yeah, and, yeah. and all that. Uh. But with that, he managed to raised 14 of us. 40, yeah, you have 14 uh, kids? Yeah, 14 brothers and sisters. So my dad raised 14 of us and... Uh, but Incredible. We, yeah, but we decided not to do his. So all of us uh, started to go on our own. Uh, for me personally, I've never thought I would run a business because uh, running a business is a different skill set. I, I, I started prim- primarily working for people for a couple of years. After that, uh, the opportunity arised because um, my brother, which runs uh, successful businesses and also some failures along the way due to financial crisis, but he had, he had the experience. So with that, that's how we team up and started the business. Was he much older than you? Oh yeah, he's 15 years older than me. Oh, Datuk okay. Nick is about 15 years older than me. So, oh, Datuk Nick. Yeah, la. Nick, okay. yes, yes. Okay, yeah. so so how how did why why among all fourteen or rather thirteen siblings did he cho- choose you? I okay, uh, I don't know why, but okay. maybe because uh, we we click very well. It is like uh, you know some someone describe us as the yin and yang. Okay, the yin and yang. So maybe he saw that. Yeah, that uh, you know he is a very strong character. He's got a very strong character, so he's a uh, literally translate to a very strong operator. Whereas yeah. I am different, I I I'm a outside guy. I I, I do sales. Okay, so okay. That, so, a, so you're, a, the, a, you're the you're the human face. Yeah, line. I'm the human face. Um, okay. And with that, uh, you know, that was back in 1996 when we first started. Yeah. The business was you know before that I was working for somebody, uh, for a few years. After that, it became very political. Yeah, a lot of things went into place. Where I decided not to do this anymore. Had a, made a lot of good friends, and the friends were saying, "Hey, why don't you come and do something on your own? Yeah. We will support you." Yeah, and that's where we started. So just you and your brother started then. Yep. Okay. So you agreed to do this because you had the backing of your brother, and he was quite experienced in business. Right? Uh, yes, so this was, was his idea, or oh, this 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 was actually nature fact. It was a, I I believe it's a mutual idea, mutual okay. mutually. Uh, okay. We were we were doing some other businesses. The business weren't doing well, you know, like struggling to be honest. Mm. Uh, and the opportunity uh, came with with this product. I, I I knew of this product quite well, but to actually start to do it, it is not an easy task. the The journey was very difficult. Uh, literally, you know, you start from ground level, and to sell this product. You need a different skill set to sell. Okay, what is the product? The security seals. Okay, so what are security seals? Uh, it is used to protect assets, to ensure that tampering is not done. Okay, so like, um, so like, um, say elections, right? Mm. So vote, votes lah. Votes, right? yeah. Bo- ballot boxes. Ballot boxes, yeah. One, right? Yeah, yep. Yeah. yeah, we do. Uh, the last general election in Malaysia, we actually supply the election commission, SPR with the seal to secure the ballot boxes. Okay. So if you have uh, the Semenye one that's coming up, would most the probably, by election. Yeah, okay. election would also be using the same seal. Okay, um, okay. So and, yeah, uh, very, very specialized product. Yeah, very, yeah, to be, uh, it's not a rocket science product, but it's a product that is that is needed to be used in, in multiple industries and multiple uh, areas. Uh, you just imagine uh, a product that secures the integrity of anything. Okay. For example, we look at a food chain. Uh, when when you have say, for example, transportation of maple syrup, maple syrup actually costs nothing, you know, in the tank. Yeah. 
assuming if contamination happens in the tank by whole doing tank the whole thing is gone is okay if it goes into the food chain sub the the food chain uh, uh, cycle yeah everything will be contaminated so hence the security is very important to ensure that the supply is intact nobody contaminated that product so it doesn't goes go into the supply chain Okay. The food supply chain, where it is converted into bread or or, or no other byproducts, mm. so that's why the security level, although it's a physical product, it is very important to maintain the integrity of. It can be maple syrup, it can be cash, it can be anything. Okay, so go back to nineteen ninety six, right? Your brother was fifteen years older than you. Mm. Uh, he had done a few businesses, some good, some bad. So clearly, or maybe the, the the did the startup capital capital come from him, or how how did you all get started with the funding? How how did you you know because it's one thing to start a business; it's another thing to fund its early development. Yeah. Uh, well, if I if I if I if I were to look back, in actual fact, uh, I never expected to be where I am today, because when we first started, we didn't have any money. Okay. There was no funding. So even he had no money. Uh, because literally we were we were losing you know we we lost a, we lost quite a fair bit in in the previous businesses that we were doing. You were already doing business with yeah, them. Yeah, we were we were in actual fact uh, transporting and selling uh, what we call uh, things like carambolas, mm-hmm. fresh uh, you know the fruits, fresh fruits, uh, ginger, tonka ali to Europe. Okay, so oh, you're doing um, uh, what we call uh, export export of fruits. Oh, so Malaysian perishables, per- yeah. So Malaysian per- perishables to Europe. Yep, to Europe, and, and you lost money in that business. Yeah, because uh, uh, because when you when we send anything over to say in, in in Europe or in UK, upon arrival, we are actually at the mercy of the the receiving end. Yes, they will tell us the freight hey, forwarders and stay. Uh, not the freight forwarders, the, the 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 buyers. Okay, the buyers. Fifty percent of your goods are damaged and you know they don't do it all the time they will tell you yeah they will tell you but they're lying yeah I, we, we can't tell because there's no accountability so they don't there's no there's no the visibility yep oh. there's no visibility and we can't we can't afford to buy fly there to just to have a look mm. yeah the pictures taken the i don't think it does justice because there's no cha- chain of event yeah and that's the reason why uh with that when we did our our business in Mega Fortress or the seal business, uh, some of this uh, experience is inculcated into how the setup is run. Mm. Uh, with that, we you know we could grow the com- we could grow the company very fast. So the the main lesson from the earlier perishables export business was not putting too much risk in the others in the counterparty. Correct or securing. The, the end the, the value chain yep what, what were the lessons there okay uh, the lesson was uh, we have to go local if we need to survive or grow so when we first started we had to uh, sacrifice or come up with a deal where uh, my partners has got equity stakes okay so, so they are localized partners but okay. we, we we have the majority and with the majority we give them all this technical and financial support that is when we start. We started to be very stable, really. Okay, so you got you got the buy-in of all the parties to the transaction. Yeah. So they, there's no well, the reduced chance, not not impossible, reduced, yeah. reduced chance of them shafting you lah, basically. Correct, correct. Right. And uh, that was a, that was actually an experience that we uh, was a valuable experience because it, it actually formulated how 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 we would have done the business. Uh, in the short period of twenty two years to grow to where we are today, uh, in 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 our in our industry, it's actually no mean task. It's a, it's quite a big task. Yeah. Yeah. Because uh, we are now operating in many countries. We have got customers all over the world, and these are all built through the years. And when we build that, it is important that we have the correct people with us, and the correct people, uh, we 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 assemble them. We created entrepreneurs out of Malaysia, yeah. with plenty of them, and from there uh, we grew the business together. Okay, so staying in 1996, right? You uh, had made some. Presumably, you didn't have a lot of money. Mm. So, how did you start the business? Because security seals, even today in 2019, sounds a bit wow, esoteric, right? Mm. In 1996, that must have sounded like rocket science. Oh yeah, right. Yeah, so, you. Would, so you how how do you sell something so specialized? <laughs> 
And how do you fund it? Because there's salaries to pay, yeah, right? Yeah. There's travel costs. There's everything. Office costs. There's everything. Yeah. Uh, what we did was uh, the initial step, the initial stage uh, to get into the business. We we actually negotiated a a uh, distributorship with a local uh, with a local Malaysian company, which was based in Johor. Mm. Uh, they produce. They passed it on to us. We have a little markup, and we sell to our end customers. So we be- we became a a distributor, but distributor. yeah, but of security yeah, sales. Security sales. Okay. But it was just a one item to to get into the market. Within six months, we grew. I grew. We I, we grew the business. The company went direct. So it created a what we call a very uh, a, a little. Uh, ambition for us to do our own now because there's no point building business for some other people and they went direct from that from that was also a lesson that we did the trading item was the cheapest to start because there's no cost for us okay in the first place why did you choose to do security sales what made you think that this is a business worth getting into uh, because when I was working for a seal company okay. I, I saw the opportunity of this business being done in a different manner you know, uh, in a different. Uh, oh, so you had come from the industry. Yeah, in the past. I, so I had I had about, about a two two and a half years experience. Two and a half years experience. I was working for my ex boss, uh, but when I came out, and I I did not, no, I did not. Uh, it was I, when I left the company. There was no intention to, to actually start. Compete. No, yeah. no, it was just like because there was so much politicking yeah. going on. I yeah. said, well, you know, I get literally. Bugger it, you know, I yeah. want to just have a peaceful life. Yeah. So right. I came out of Politics it. Politics is a terrible yeah, thing in the world. Yeah, it is, it is, and it happens everywhere. Yeah. And, uh, and, and so it reflects in our current system. I, I will tell my people, please do not, I mm. do not condone politics. So when I left, I uh, had good friends, and the friends were saying, yo, please go and get something, I will support you. Oh, so your friends supported your whatever you wanted okay, to do. Okay, well, well, okay. wow, okay. So, so <laughs> that's interesting. Why did they do that? Why do you think they did that? Because I built up a very interesting uh, relationship, uh, rapport between the customers. They became a friend. Oh, so customers said they will support you in whatever you do. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so whatever. So I had to identify something that I could sell to them. Okay, what was it about you that they liked or trusted? Was it because you? Demonstrated integrity in dealings. Was it because you were trustworthy? Was it because you were very hardworking? All of the above, or what? Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure. I know I can't say for myself, huh, uh-huh. but I'm pretty sure uh, what you mentioned that there, there, could, there could be a big okay. element of it. Uh. Okay. Uh, it, importantly, is the integrity we practice is 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 one of my hierarchy. How do you define integrity? Okay. Uh, it it. The integrity is uh, what we call defined in many ways, okay? Uh, but on the broad aspect is, whenever you promise or say anything, you have to deliver. It is not for sales speech. If we can't do it, we will tell you we can't do it. Uh, basically, that's a fundamental how we, how we do that. Uh, that is how we did our customers. But the integrity level doesn't go to the customers only. It goes to the staff. It goes towards the working colleagues. It goes towards my partners. Uh, mm. How we supported them. And basically, you do not do things behind people's back. Mm. Or you, you, you do things that are proper. Mm. So, so the integrity elements, are, although it's a big one, uh, we... We, we always say that whatever we do, the honesty in that, you know, when integrity get literally translates to honesty. Mm. So when you're honest about what you're doing, uh, it, makes, it makes life very easy. That's a very interesting thing to say to the entrepreneur, to the young person, right? Mm-hmm. And I always say my target market in any of these conversations is the 31-year-old me. Mm. The 31-year-old me wanted to start business, right? right? The 31-year-old me wanted to invest a bit of whatever spare cash I had at the time, and I wanted to make the right life lessons. But when it comes to business, you know when you're young, people say to you, oh, you know, business is all about who you know uh, rather than what you know. It's mm. about connections, and sometimes you must be a bit dirty and all these things. She is not true. What I've discovered from my limited knowledge of business is that people of integrity, of character, people who have trustworthy and honest are the ones who do well in business. 
I think, right? Yeah. And those one of the main yes. things. Yeah. Yeah, you you I think uh Chong you you're you're perfectly correct and that you are spot on. Mm. Personally for myself, uh when you say for example 30, 30 year old, a lot of people will say that uh you know when I, I want to be an entrepreneur, I want to be successful and to them they always they always equate a value to it. Yeah. The value of driving a big car, a big fact, a, a, yeah. a very profitable bank account and so on and so on. It is, that, is not, that is not success. Success is relative. Success, being successful is actually very, it's relative. You can be successful. Every one of us is successful, uh, to, to be honest. We are successful in everything we do. It's just that the degree of success only. So when you measure that success in different terms, uh, you will see what we call a different entrepreneur because it is not measured through material wealth or, or the earnings that you do. You, you need to have a wholesome, as far as I'm concerned, a wholesome uh, person yeah. to, be, to, to be successful. Yeah. Uh, you have the integrity, your passion, your hard work, you know, everything that is the intrinsic value of it has to come in. And when you have that, you, when you translate that into whatever business you do, you will never fail because I always believe there will be somebody that would recognize that and you always need what we call the initial first spark. I mean, the initial first spark to do that business or do whatever you're doing and from there, you, I know you need to definitely being successful entrepreneur, mm. you, you have to go through a certain hardship. Eh? Yeah. Uh, but because of that little thing that you have, you are able to make it easier because yeah. because your, your your values in life are different. Okay, so when you're a young person and you want to start your own business, sometimes you start. And I, I recall the very clearly the words of uh, Dato Tan Chin Nam, mm. one of the co-founders of uh, IGB. IGB Tan and mm. Tan, right? Yep. And I remember I read his book. He wrote a book called um, "Don't Assume It Makes an Ass Out of You and Me." Okay, so one of the core principles which I remember from his book, he said that. Um, you do you do business not because you love it but because you have to do it. Well, of course, he came from another era, okay, right, correct. where he had to do what everything yeah. has to put food on the table. He's got children, right? Yeah. So when you define success and you say, okay, the meaning of success is to is to be able to be okay, integrity, honesty, but also to love what you do and have a passion for what you do. Sometimes to the young person, the passion doesn't. It, it cannot be there it might not be there because he just has to do the business even older people who do business it might not be passion it might just be necessity yep. and if it's necessity sometimes they cut corners and we know Malaysia the whole world has got funny funny businessmen who do all kinds of funny funny yeah, things that's true yep. yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I would I would say you know definitely what you, what you say this you know uh, it all boils down to the the principle of what you want to do or your, your, your principles in life even if I make one dollar, you have to live within that means of one dollar and you'll be happy with it. Meaning, for example, uh, if when you go into business, you do, not, you do not need to have your primary aim at what we call monetary returns. The primary that's, a very, okay, wait, that's a very powerful message. Yeah, so the not. primary aim of being in business is not to make money, it is to do what? Yeah. Okay, uh, I look at it from many angles. Uh, okay. Personally, I say that uh, I, I look at it from a CSR program first. Okay, okay. easy for you to say now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, 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 Adrian. Because <laughs> you made a bit of money, you're a bit older now, right? And late, later on, we'll talk about your, your new shareholders, right? Yeah. Easy for you to say though, if you're 25, 28 years old, you're struggling, you can't pay your rent, you can't pay your people, they're like, what nonsense is he saying? What <laughs> shit? <laughs> you, you have to make money because otherwise you can't pay your guys. It's yeah. simple as that. So, <laughs> when, because I always, I always believe, personally for myself, maybe, maybe the uh, journey that I've been through was slightly different. I'm in a very different business. Uh, luckily, this business is not that you have many competitors. It's, it's very different. I see it as, when I say that, is I, when... I would de- define what CSR means. Eh? Yeah. Look at it from a perspective. If I don't make money, but I'm able to, whatever I do, I ensure my the livelihood of the people behind beside me are looked after first. Okay, when they are looked after, 
well or even to a certain extent to meet their minimum requirement and if they see us as bosses doing that they tend to work as a team together to build the business with you so maybe when I say CSR is my CSR is I, I look after sweet, yeah I, I, I look after other we look after other people's interests first we make sure that uh, whatever that we need to do is our Dato myself's uh, interest uh, is actually at the worst it's last it's the last one yeah. you can we, pay the last yeah we pay uh, first of all we pay the statutory payments the bank payments whatever staff salary and so on so on the last bottom part is only our so what they do is if you look at say for example a lot of people will think to think hey I make money first I should I should enjoy it first and 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 do what I can do use the money to grow again try to uh, may, maybe it's, it it will work but to me I've not gone through that process my process was slightly different uh, money wasn't you know money was difficult to be honest with you for the initial stage it was difficult you you literally uh, we had to borrow high interest borrowings to, to, to start the business 1996 was just before the dot com uh, crash yeah, it was the financial before the Asian crisis, financial yeah. crisis. Yeah. 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 it was a it was also a blessing because the interest rates were 13% I think yeah, in those days yeah, yeah. you borrowed at 13% more than that I borrowed sure, at 2.8% 2. a month holy shit those are long prices <laughs> <right? Yes. laughs> so that's the, nearly 36% yeah. a year you're mad but the thing is we don't borrow a, you know, it's not it's not that we to roll uh, the, yeah. to roll yeah. you know because we needed the, the yeah. cash the flow cap, yeah. uh, having said that the uh, the high interest uh, lenders were actually very impressed with us because we were paying on time we, Who we were, they, were these banks or were these individuals they were or? individual money uh, licensed lenders Oh wow! Uh, they actually they have the a proper ch- license. Ch- uh, ch- 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 they ones, yeah, ch- ch- ones. <laughs> <laughs> but I think but end of the day, the yeah. banks will not even touch you because yeah. uh, you know we went to the bank with thirty, uh, hundred thousand fixed deposit. Yeah. They gave us a loan of thirty thousand. Wow, mm. thirty cents a uh, dollar. The, the largest bank in Malaysia. Oh, so can you imagine? You know, uh, they have zero risk. <laughs> yeah, and they still uh, so, but, but, you, yeah. yeah. So, so we were, you know, we. With the lessons we learned, you know, we actually put it in place in many areas that we we, yeah. we do. the The journey, or like I said, our business was was done very different. Yeah. We we literally had to look after our people first. Yeah. So the people was our main capital strength. What kind of people were they? Were they sales guys? Or were they backroom bar guys? Or combination of everyone? Because okay. every single one of them played a very important part to to make to make where we are today. Right How down many to people the did you have in those days? Uh, when we first started, we had four people. Okay. Uh, now I have about seven hundred plus people. Okay. Uh, every one of them, uh, the four people, the four pioneers are still with me. Wow. Yeah, they're still with me. How so do you take care of them? Did you give them shares or bonus or? Okay. okay we. I. I. I believe first of all they must like what they do in order yeah. to stay that long. Okay. So so they're professionally fulfilled. Yep, in a way, yeah. and uh, we 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 do look after you know we we try or we, we inculcate to look after the welfare of most of the staff. Uh, having said that, uh, I'm I'm pretty sure in the next uh, few years from now, if with the new investors, we give us a better uh, what we call plan scheme or planning or scheme for yeah. the employees. Yeah, so that would that would that would come in play, and basically this is what we work towards, you know. Uh, end of the day, it doesn't matter where you work. You need to be happy. You need to enjoy your working life. And we try to inculcate a, a good working environment for them. Okay, uh, it is not ideal, like what I mentioned, but there will be ups and downs. But as mm. long as you provide a very good uh, conducive working environment for the staff, I think the staff will stay with you a long time. We have staff that have been with us from uh, what, 15 to 18 years already. Okay, so the first five years, very rocky. Usually in, in a company's gestation, first five years, very rocky, right? What were the top headaches in, in those days? Oh, okay. <laughs> I must say, because I w- I'm in a different business, I, I would say that uh, slightly different. My, my top headache was we couldn't, we couldn't produce enough to deliver when we first started. Okay, so sales was too strong. Yeah, sales was strong. Why? Yeah, because uh, many applications. Yeah, many applications or people were good at it. So we had to we had to struggle with production. 
But, so um, you were producing your own or you were buying? Yeah, we were them? producing our own with it. Okay. After, okay. after the, uh, what, nine months of business, on the 12th month, we started producing on our own already. Okay, what? So you had your own we factory? Are, we have our own tool. Tool? So you had to buy the tool? We, we made the tool, we borrowed. You made the tool or you we, had we, to buy the tool? No, no we, we borrowed to make the tool. Borrowed to make, how much was that? Uh, it was, I think it was about maybe 30, 40,000 ringgit. Okay, yeah. so not 30, 30, 40, not 340,000 lah. But uh, not 3, 4 million, which is, yeah. No, 3, 3, 30,000 ringgit is like maybe 200,000 ringgit Today, now. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It's a lot of money it's there. It's a lot of money. You bought one or you bought a few? We, we, we borrowed to make one. Yeah, and that's yeah. how we started the, yeah, the business. Yeah. And you make the two, we own the two. Yeah. We subcontracted to a molder to mold the products for us. Wow. Okay. Then uh, over... So that's, an easy, that, that's a good pr problem in a way, quote unquote, to have. When you've got more orders than you can fill. Mm. Right? It is, it is. It is a good, a good pro problem. And it's still problem. happening 22 years later, it's still happening. Shit, dude. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good problem. It's a good we problem. Are, we have actually maxed up a lot of our things in there. And one of the reasons why we have uh, restructured the group is because we are looking at uh, increasing the factory uh, efficiency, the production efficiency, and so on and so on. Yeah. In order to make our marketing life more decent. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so what, what other good problems do you have? Uh, Good problems is we got very good paymasters. <laughs> oh uh, shit! The what? <laughs> That's not a problem. Yeah, good problem. Uh, play good paymasters. Yeah. Okay, is. so <laughs> what is it about your business that gives you these? They're not even problems. They're like, they're like benefits, right? Because receivables is a big thing. Three months is okay in the media industry. Sometimes receivables can take six to seven months to pay. Mm. Okay, right? Right. And and they wouldn't bend an eyelid. They pay you last. Right. Right, they collect first. You know, typical accountants, lah. Right. Correct. Huh. Yeah. What is it about your your industry that gives you such good receivables? Because the customers that we that we supply to are, are large corporations. You okay. you know you just just like uh, Glen Levert, yeah. you know, uh, when they when they deliver their products, you know, we supply to their their plant in in Scotland. Okay. Also, Glen Glenlivet are our uh, clients yeah, as well. Yeah. No kidding. So, if when I open this, this is yours, is it? No, no, no. It's the seal on the back of their container. Oh, to prove that it's not counterfeit. You no, know, no, on the container, on the container. That they, when they ship, so that people don't tamper or you know or replace them or do whatever they want. It's to protect yeah. the container itself. Okay, uh, so if they don't get your product, they can't ship those products. Yeah, they can't ship the products. So they got to look after you. Yeah, in, in a way, yeah, in a way. They, they can't piss you off. <laughs> no, we got there. There are substitutes, but the only problem is because maybe they they like our face better. They like our <laughs> face better, <laughs> so they like to deal with us. You know, we send we send friendly faces to go in to see them. Okay, so yeah. again, relationship then. Yeah, relationship. Relationship. That's why I said uh, when I first and I told you uh, initially, our human capital was very important. We, we needed to build a very strong platform of human capital, front line and also back end. Okay, so definitely the touch points are very important. Mm. What makes a good relationship? You, you say integrity and honesty, what, correct, no, no question, right? Hard work, no, that, that's, that's base case. What else? What else builds a good relationship between you and customer? We, I think I would sum it up at, uh, at the end of the day is even before they, they require something, yeah. By because by the series of uh, discussion we had, yeah. we will be able to un know what they want. We will give them something. We innovate something for them. Already. Okay, so so we, we are slightly different from a lot of people. You know, our we you know we are innovation is 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 one important segment of our play. Okay, uh, so you kind of like second guess what they want and then meet, but they, before they even well, how the hell do, does Adrian know what they want? The yeah, kind of thing, yeah, so. because they don't, you know, when you have a, when you when you meet them, that's why uh, most of our marketing people travel a lot, because we we we, we collect a lot of market intelligence, yeah. intelli intelligence, uh, and with that we are able to to do things that are different. So in twenty how many years of business? Nineteen plus 23. four, twenty three years of business. When I ask you your biggest challenges, actually your challenge not really a challenge. No, no. Your headaches don't even headaches, no. yeah, right? It, uh, it's true to a certain extent, I know. Maybe I'm a bit. Uh, what uh, have there been anything that that hurt your business? Like I don't know, like a fire in the plant, or I don't know, uh, insurance claim or some shit like that, right? The, the <laughs> truth, uh, we we had not had that. The only thing is, uh, will most probably boil down to production delays. Okay, production delays. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of like, okay. Kind of like, kinda yeah. like uh, you know, 
it, you know, where you sometimes you 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 take an order which is so yeah. Yeah. that max up your capacity. Yeah, uh, and then or oh, then you cannot deliver, is it? Okay. We uh, a bit a bit uh, different. Uh, like I say, uh, business a bit different. Uh, you know, we are we are in a in a business that is very resilient towards a lot of things. Yeah. Rece- recession time, we sell. Good times, we so sell. So why are there not more competitors in the market oh, for they, what you do? Uh, they, they, this is not a you and me product. We are luck, you know, we are in a way blessed. You know, they, 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 they are competitors, but we are blessed that, uh, you know, we are able to capture market share and sustain those market share for many years. Because it sounds almost too good to be true, Adrian, right? Mm. Because the machines don't sound that like they cost too much money. Mm, yep. It doesn't sound like it's so scientific that you need a rocket scientist to produce Correct. it. You need to have good people. Mm. That's kind of like, okay, you can, can, can still find. Yep. Um, global market, number of applications and users industries, yes, you can yep. go and find. So why haven't more people, because typically this high value, very high attractive industry, uh, attract Waves and waves of competitors. Yes, you are right. There are plenty. That's the reason why uh, I mentioned to you my human capital is important. It's my front end that keeps our business going. So the number one value is relationship. And your people yeah. and their the relationship. Yeah. The product has to be good. Huh? The product okay. has to meet the minimum Correct. standard. Minimum standard. Yeah. Huh? Yep. Yeah. But if your product is super good, doesn't mean that you can sell. It's how we, how we build up that relationship. Mm. Incredible. Incredible. Yeah. It's a very simple business. That's why I'm saying that we are in, a, I'm in a very unique business. Yeah. Uh, you, if you ask me to rewind back and look for other businesses again, I, th- I might no, think, don't bother. I, 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 I might say, you know, it will not be worth the hassle to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Out for other businesses. But and I think I remember you telling me your margins are also very good, right? Yeah. We have, we have pretty impressive margins. Mm. Like more than 50% or something, right? Yeah. I maybe mean, lost so a lot. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to attract too many other people to come in, right? <laughs> no, yeah, but, um, but I mean, once you've done something for 20 plus uh, years, we, your, your uh, goodwill the margin, in the market. The margin used to be very high, 50s, but yeah. with the competition and also uh, customer, they, we, we have dropped a little bit, but still yeah. very, very high sustainable margins. So when you went, and I, I don't know how many countries you're in, you're at least in 20, 30, 30, 30. Yeah, we, we have offices in about uh, 19 or 20 countries. 19 or 20 countries, like which ones? Hmm? Which countries? Uh, it, we are in major places like uh, Europe, okay. uh, in Europe, uh, you name it, in most countries. in Big developed markets, uh, yeah, where developed there's less manufacturing. Europe, and Europe and, Europe and uh, US is my main market. Yeah, where the most developed yeah. industries are, right? Mm-hmm. Whether it's food Correct. or manufacturing, packaging, Correct. right? In Asia, we have uh, we are not we are not very uh, in a way uh, selling a lot. Yeah, uh, but we do sell some. Okay, but the two primary markets are US and what? Okay, so because our production because our production is limited to what we have now. So production is still in Malaysia. In Malaysia and China. Oh, okay, and China that's very important. Okay, so everybody knows that in order to come to a certain size in your business, if you're ambitious that way, lah. Um, you can't do it in Malaysia. 31 million people, how yeah. big so? Even Thailand is bigger than Malaysia. Yeah, yeah. Even Myanmar is bigger than Malaysia. Yeah. Jakarta, don't say lah. Jakarta is like, what, two nine six, times the size yeah, of Malaysia? 260, two, right? 260, or 265, yeah. Really huge lah. Yeah. But the thought of setting up abroad is so scary. I mean, if you are if you are a novice investor, there's regulation, there's policy, there's tax laws, there's labor issues. How do you hire the right people? Cultural differences, time zones. Mm. Currencies, right? When you went, how do you do it? Oh, we we only had two plants. Uh. Yeah. Uh, Malaysia primary is our, our main plant. When we went to China, uh, we did it slightly different. We needed to make sure that uh, the Chinese partner must be somebody that that can work with us long term. We've been with him for about 18 years now. So when we went in, uh, the condition was slightly different from a lot of other people. We we were not concent- we, we we did not concentrate in China s- local domestic sales. Neither did we uh, do the business for China. It was practically for our global supply. Okay, so export. We market. control the. <coughs> we actually don't control. We actually dictate the the production facility. I see. And that's how we we managed to maintain the business till now. Uh, having said that, 
China is on a on a escalating course. Mm. So there are there there are there are what we call plans to scale it down to look at an alternative uh, production facilities, either through a full flash manufacturing or what the industry is looking at now the uh, smart cell factory mm. where where the, everything is fully automated. And, this and that's going to be the direction, right? AIs yeah. and robots. Yeah. There will be the direction of doing it, and uh, we are we are actually uh, st- we are actually embarked on this uh, on this uh, journey already. Okay. The p- production facility. Imagine if we decentralize. You know, we can decentralize uh, some of the products that we have. Uh, it will make our logistic supply costs uh, and also uh, efficiency uh, very much better. Okay. So your offices in 20 countries, of course, they are sales offices, yeah. la, by and large, right? they're, they're yeah. rep offices, right? Correct. But still, just the setup and there's regulations, there's licensing, there's all kinds of things. Yep, yep. So um, yeah, how did you, <laughs> how'd you can navigate those? Uh, what, what? Or step by step. Step by step. It was one small step. It was small steps. So small baby steps then yeah. to, you know, large steps. Yeah. Uh, primary, like you say, you need to understand, you need to understand the business first. Whether you know the business can can do well in that country, uh, there are certain things that you need to do your homework, mm. and when you've done your homework, okay. the first most important thing is the people that go front your your operation there, yeah. which is your localized people. Okay. So home okay homework is what homework is market studies. Market study. But uh, so you commission press Waterhouse to do no, it for you. We, we do our own. Okay, so yeah. you just go in there with the clipboard able, and you yeah. ask questions and yeah, you make yeah. notes and we are able to do it because of the because of the uh, years of uh, experience we have, we, we can actually identify very fast on which which market segment. Or okay, so your do. own people go there, study the market, make notes, send back a detailed evaluation yep, yep, of the yep, yep. back to the bosses mm-hmm. lah. Okay, because did uh, you ever get it wrong? Uh, one. One or two, definitely yeah. you can know, you can have. But the uh, percentage of strike rate is high, so it's good. Like you say, you understand your your local requirement, the whatever licensing or whatever yeah. VAT and whatever that's required over that country. You need to understand that. Uh, from there, importantly, is to establish a good partner. Okay. So Before that's that's when we first started. Uh. Okay. Uh, the good partner is established, and when you have a good partner, you literally can sell anything. Okay, before we talk about partner, right? Talk about the market evaluation first. And I know I don't normally ask this question because I think that business and, and, and success they come as a result of hard work. Mm. Because you know, like the golfer Gary Player once said, you know, I, I, I the, the harder I work, the luckier I become. <laughs> and I think that's by and large true. Yeah. Right? Element of luck is Element important, of, huh? Correct. So yeah, you need to have a little bit of luck. Huh. So I was gonna ask you. How important was luck to you? Because it seems as if like the dominoes have fallen in your favor. Yeah, the very few, very few, even other businesses, financial crisis, recession, everything, all these things, dot com crash, all these things. Even like Amazon can get a white one, right? Yeah, uh. yeah. So yeah, that's true. That's why that's why when we, when I mentioned to you, uh, you do the right thing. You 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 have very high integrity. You have all these things. I I I term it as karma. Do you, so you that's why the karma with it, uh, the little good luck comes in it. Then you, I wouldn't say you maximize on the good luck, you make good use of the good luck. So to every single step, store. every right. good step actually, uh, you know, relates to a lot of things that when it come back, you don't even know that it came back. Yeah, uh, yeah. The, Some, uh, you we do something without you do good, without come without good, yeah. good come to you right? Yeah, you, you don't you don't need you know you don't do expect a return. So we don't expect a return on certain a lot. Uh, yeah. What I'm saying is, when we go and do a sale, we expect a sale return. Uh, yeah. That one is a very normal business yeah, transaction. Yeah. But when you do things that's out of that transaction, things that are intrinsic one, you don't expect a return. So those little things helps out in terms of yeah. e- everything is like a nucleus of everything, you know, yeah. like a, a, a whole thing. And with that, I, I always believe you you do good, you get good return. Get good. But even if, if you, you do get, harm, mm, uh, then bo siang lah. Yeah, bo siang. But if you, you say that you, you do good but you get bad return, don't don't be don't be angry about it. Because maybe that person needs to go through that s- cycle. So it uh, y- 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 improves because, because some, sometimes a lot of people say that you know I, I, I do this, I expect you to be but now, even if it doesn't, but I always believe you continue to do the second time, 
if you still behave the same the third time maybe a bit lesser yeah. but you don't go into a, into a mode that you become uh, uh, you dislike doing that yeah so it's different I, I, I view things very different yeah. uh, that's the reason maybe uh, things happen for a reason a lot of things uh, unexpected things you, know, you, you can have a lot of good things in life uh, because I don't measure them in, in material form yeah. I measure them in form that people cannot comprehend I measure them in happiness yes. I measure them in fulfillment good health right? yeah, good, good relationships health, good friends yeah. these, are, these are things that money can't buy because in the world uh, I always tell my good friends if you have a problem and if that problem cannot be solved with time and money you seriously have a problem really. <laughs> <laughs> but if you can solve with time and money there's never a problem yeah yeah uh, Okay, I'm sure you know this, right? Because uh, we both come from Penang, la, mm. okay? And there's a lot of superstitious people. In, every, the, in the whole world, there's superstitious people, right? Yeah. They will go to temple to pray, la, they will arrange the house in feng shui. La, you know, they even go to the okay. geomancer or the, the fortune teller and then say, what year, what year, what year, what good, how yeah. my position, my sitting position to get good business luck. Yep. Are you one of those people? Okay, uh, I I am not, I don't, yeah. I don't get obsessed with it. Yeah. But it's always there's no harm. There's no harm in complying. To, to comply or okay. to, to look at it at a, from a diff, from a certain angle, okay. certain things that are reasonable to do, uh, it's it's okay to do. You what know, it's just like things? it's just like if if the guy tells you don't don't walk across the road without looking left and right. Okay, that one. Uh, <laughs> so <laughs> it's a good thing. Or it's, a, it's, a, it's a similar that or that advice. Uh. so you see, if the guy says, uh, you need to go and strip everything out in your factory, throw everything and put this new thing, then there's something also that we will not do, it's impossible to do. Yeah. But if you say that, hey, this one, if you put uh, different lights there or different color, yeah, you, it's okay, no harm. Okay. So we don't get obsessed with it because feng shui, uh, you know, being Chinese, it does, it does, it does, it does, uh, it does, uh, uh, it does enter exist. the equation. Uh, yeah, it does I, enter I, the equation. I think so. If you need to, but you need to marry them with, with good principles good, yeah. also, no, right? You cannot, I think the Indian guys have the Vashtu Shastra, uh, which is yes, their equivalent, yes, yes, right? Yes, yep, yep. Yeah. So you can't, you can't say that just because you you do all the good feng shui, but you do things that are not so nice. Yeah. So what's then, the point of then, having... Then, then it doesn't... It doesn't, yeah, it doesn't. So it has to, it has to complement. Everything is complementary. Everything is okay. complementary. Mm. Okay. So then, um, of course, hard work. Be chow, be chow. That be one chow, is hundred percent. You need to have base case. Base to, case to succeed in anything, you must have hard work, right? Yeah. But hard work also means sacrifices. Correct. Hard work means you are doing eighteen hour days. Sometimes you don't get to eat with your wife. You don't see your children grow up. Maybe for a few years, <laughs> True. right? True. How did you ever do those things? How did you navigate those things? Uh, maybe I had an understanding family, right? Yeah. And kids, and wife, kids, kids, main, wife, kids, yeah. wife. Yeah. How old were you when you got married? Uh, thirty. Okay, so yeah. quite young, yeah. normal. Quite, yeah. quite a quite a normal age. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but the thing is, I, I tend to look at it hard work. I tend to, you know, it's not like putting the hours in. It's making sure that your hours are translated to something useful, mm. or something that is beneficial, or things that you can actually uh, see a, a, a value in it. You know, the, when I talk about value, it's, 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 it's not those value money, eh? it's, it's different values. So, so whenever I do, is I always tend to tell people, I don't work very hard, but I work very smart. Okay, that one, then easy to say. Easy to say, difficult to do. And what exactly does working smart? Because my first job really in, in the bank, right? They said work smart. What the hell is work smart? <laughs> work smart, it, uh, to, to me, in my own definition, okay. uh, you have a task to do. You, know, you, have, you, you want to achieve, say for example, to close this sale. You need to understand the principles behind how to close that sale first. If you understand the principles of how to close that sale, you're working smart really. Okay, what are the principles to closing a sale? Okay, okay I will, uh, maybe it, I will use it, 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 it can real be a life, sign, yeah. yeah, real life example. Huh? Okay, real life example uh, is, uh, I, when I was in the UK, I, you know, normally what I do is, it is, I don't go around opening up yellow pages to look for companies that use the, the, the seal. So I, I, what I do is... That's I a shotgun to, approach, really. Yeah. Yeah. So I will drive to a, a service station, 
or petrol station or wherever there's a rest area. I look at behind all the trucks to see what seals they use. I jot it down uh, and so on and so on so that I keep a track record of the potential business I want to do. Okay. Okay. So there were, I'm giving, uh, after collecting that, I will have a jot down then. Uh, there was uh, talking about one particular incident. Uh, this incident is really something that I always remember. Uh, then of working, uh, how I how I did by doing it. Uh, on the floor, I saw a little product, which was a pull up seal, a what? A uh, pull tight seal. Pull tight seal, seal supplied oh. by a competitor. Okay, a pull tight seal. Okay, so, I can only imagine what it looks like. Yeah, okay. so it's like cable tie. You pull tight and it it, it, it locks. Okay. okay, and then the seal already lah. Yeah, seal oh. with the number and so on. And on it, it has got a company company's name called, uh, I don't mind sharing it, they're no longer, they, they've been bought, bought over by somebody already. Oh. It's called Alpha Flight Services. Okay. So Alpha Flight Services was the thing, I said, mm, wow, it's got a lot on the floor everywhere. You know? So I said, it must be a big company, catering company. Uh, they're like new ones and so on. In my lunch time, because I like to, uh, I like to watch, look at horses run. Yeah. So, but because of my limited funding or capital, <laughs> I cannot gamble. <laughs> I can only watch and maybe put maybe a pound sometimes to, to look, look at the race. This is when you first started. Lah, first huh? started. Oh. So I walk into the shop. You know, these are actually, okay, it's all luck. Uh. Uh. You see a person walking in with alpha flag services on his uh. uh. name tag. Uh. Uh. So I said, Oh, okay. So often, normally people would not go and ask, right? They will just, you know, no, I'm a, I'm an Asian. He's a white man. Yeah. He's a, he's a, he's a Caucasian. You know, they'd be embarrassed to ask. So yeah. I walk there. Oh, you work for Alpha Flight Services. Incidentally, I saw some of your seals on the floor. Uh. Do you by any chance know anybody? Oh, the purchasing manager is my good friend. Oh, <laughs> so that's oh. how that this is his number. That's how I got connected. And okay. I converted that into a long term sale. I see. So can you imagine? It's, it's how so you being inquisitive. Inquisitive. And, and so when you you know you tend to uh, when I I I will say that you know if I were to go say for example, uh, all by luck. If, assuming if I saw that person, I I don't do it. I go into the the yellow pages. I look for the word. Then start cold calling. I would have gone to a space where I say not working smart. Correct. So I went into a different area. I went into it. I I made. A contact with a guy and say, oh, it was a, just a casual conversation. Yeah. And the guy was was called Phil. 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 Today you remember his Phil name. Phil Whitley. Yeah. Wow. I actually remember his name. So Phil told me, please go and look for Sukdev. Sukdev. Uh, in Nivla, yeah, in Sing- the UK. Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. Singaporean. Singaporean guy. Some more. And if you mention to Sukdev that Phil asks you to call, he will take your call. No kidding. Yes. So that's that's the priceless information yes. because so your actually, first name basis. Uh, what we call narrowed down my my journey really. Instead of have to have to have to make such yeah. a long, yeah, you know, yeah. narrowed it. And it you got a reference as well. Reference. So I yeah. called up and uh, yeah, true. So Dev, so Dev was very nice. Then we start chatting. I didn't I didn't even sell about my sales. I was asking, you know, by the way, you know, where are you from Singapore? So we talk about everything under the sun except, except sales. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we became uh, what then after that I said oh uh, by the way no obligation okay, you know, I'd like to introduce my product to you yeah. to have a look and from there onwards we, the but there's, was there's got to be more to it than that right the, the sales process closing out the sales process and making it as efficient as possible is something that everybody wants to yeah. succeed in yeah. right yes. um, what else what else can you tell me about the successful sale so the subsequent one, then you have to manage it proper, yeah. uh, because uh, the the products are produced in Malaysia, so we had to manage it, make sure they ship on time, everything. So everything is is it's all matter of after a while, the first few rounds you don't get it right. Yeah. After a while, it is it is, it becomes a process already. Yeah. And uh, with that process, you continue to improve it. That's where that's where we we are able to to do it to a certain extent when we were when we reach our first milestone of hundred million. Our factory was still being able to produce. Wow! Then after that, we went into 150 million, which is so. What is your revenue now? It's about 152. 
Good gosh. Yeah. So 152 is a struggle really because, yeah. uh, you know, capacity. Million ringgit lah. Yeah, million ringgit. Okay. So we have not uh, expanded much on our facilities. Mm. Uh, it's we are doing it now. Yeah, because you've got the new investor in, right? New investors. Okay, we haven't talked about the new investor yet. But, um, so 1996 you started. There was the 1997 Asian financial crisis. Correct. Then you had the 2001 dot-com crash. Yes. Then you had 2008 Eight. global financial crisis. Okay. Yep. And then now, I don't know what's going to happen, okay? Maybe people are talking. Mm. So you've been through three crashes. Yeah. You're yeah. not touched in any of those three crashes. No, we will not. We will not. How, we will not. How is it humanly possible? <laughs> because this product, this product is unique. In good times, you have to use. In bad times, you even use need to use it even more. Reason why is uh, it is a product that is that has that is a uh, that has to be used to complement a lot of things. Yeah. That you do in your yeah. in your business. Yeah. Uh, we were lucky because uh, say for example in the bad times and the, in the market crash, things became cheaper. Yeah. We make more money. Yeah. You know, people were were without, uh, especially the molding people. Yeah. They are they don't have business, so we could subcontract our molding at a cheaper rate. Incredible. So, so that's that's called making use of the. Yeah. So uh, our business is very resilient, and uh, I mean, I mean, say that importantly is, whatever we do, success is always uh, relative. Okay. Relative. So let's talk about your investors, right? Mm. Um, you want to reveal them? You talk about your investors, yeah, your, your valuations. Uh, valuation, I might not reveal, okay. but my okay. investors. Uh, we 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 did a restructuring exercise. Okay. Uh, we did a restructuring exercise, and uh, at this moment of time, we have. Uh, you know, I'm glad to say that the, the company now has got investors from Singapore, namely OCBC Bank Singapore. Okay. So OCBC Bank, according to Bloomberg, was the world's safest. Was it the safest yeah, bank? Was, yeah, safest bank. Yeah, and for three them, years in a row or something, yeah, right? Yep. Yeah. And for that, uh, together with their PE fund, their Lion fund, the yeah, private equity fund, private equity fund, okay. they invested in us. Together with a, a, a company called Economic Development Board Investment of Singapore, the, the EDB, EDB is a huge thing. Yeah. So. Uh, so for the world's most safe bank to invest in you is almost like a sure thing already, <laughs> lah. In terms of how they see your business, right? Because yeah, like, yeah, I think they, they only go for safety, right? They go for stability, right? I think um, must be right. Must be right. Yeah. But okay. it, it is a it is a testament. It is a testament that you know that a uh, uh, business that 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 could bring us very far okay. together. But, but talk about your um, talk about the negotiations. These things are not they don't happen overnight. And uh, months and months and talks and this. What kind of things do investors look for? Um, what kind of hurdles must you jump through? Mm-hmm. Um, what kind of like requirements do they normally ask for? Right? But uh, this is this is what they call a mature investments really because your business has been around for twenty years, yep, right? Yep, yep. Yeah. Um, so it's a very different constitution. If you're doing venture capital, different set, yep. different set of rules. Mm. Mezzanine capital, different set of rules. Yep. Seed different. funding, different set of rules. Correct. Very yeah, true. But this is mature funding already. Yep. What what did they look for? Uh, it, it wasn't easy. The journey to the journey was about uh, for, I think close to two years. Two well, years. Only okay. two years. One and a half. One slightly more than one and a half years uh, to two years. We had to do a series of uh, you know a lot a lot of things with them. Now the primary where the new investors are coming in are not investing in our traditional business. Okay, it's and the next stage. It's the next stage of business. Because so there's, they see a, a mechanization to the yes, whole process. Yes, mechanization and also the digitalization into the into the business itself. Okay. Uh, they see us as, because we have got a very huge customer base that we have built, uh, reputable ones, uh, and a- enable to go into many, many areas of, of, of solutions. So uh, it is also something that we we are look that we are very proud of, because you remember when I told you about the fruit business, mm. if go arrives UK and we don't yeah. even have a visibility of it. Imagine twenty years ago, I have this facility where somebody can tell me, I will give you visibility of your cargo when they arrive, whether they have been open, non open, whether the temperature is constant, intact, and so on, priceless. Yes, that's what we're going to be doing. Mm. So this mm. is one part solution that we we are rolling out, and it, it will it will be the solutions will be uh, you're looking from an end to end basis, where this will be rolled up for multiple industries, be- okay. to understand you know the the 
the pain points of the industry and also to make business a bit more efficient. So I presume at some point in time, you're going to be going for IPO. I mean, typically, right, for any PE fund, three-year horizon, public uh, listing. Uh, yep. Okay. We've got but a four-year, four-and-a-half-year window, I think. Yeah, yeah four, four-and-a-half-year window, which is actually quite long already. Lah. Um, but the SME mindset, you have you you. I think you're still kind of considered SME lah, mm. and uh, we know. I mean, Credit Suisse, First Boston, CSFB, everybody has analyzed the numbers. SMEs are the backbone of Southeast Asia, right? Yep. I think SMEs are maybe sixty to seventy percent of the economy, right? Correct. And SMEs run the whole gamut from healthcare to bank accounts to this to that, manufacturing, furniture, everything, gloves, everything. What is the typical SME mindset? Because we don't read about these guys. We don't. I had no idea that you even existed until you won the Ernst and Young Entrepreneur of the Year Award last year. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, you were invisible. Yeah. But you had built this business in twenty countries, hundred fifty million ringgit revenue, and you were invisible. Why? Why? How? Explain the SME mindset to me. Is it because you're too busy doing the business? <laughs> <laughs> that, uh, in a way, in a way, I, I I'm. I'm pretty sure we were because we were we were busy concentrating on growing the business, uh, and because of the nature of our business, uh, mm. we were really literally under the radar. Yeah, we're under the radar. Yeah, you're you're right. SME mindsets are different. You know, uh, what is the typical SME um, entrepreneur? I I I cannot. Maybe I will. I I won't generalize it. Uh. No, do generalize. <laughs> <laughs> you have to. You no choice. But yeah, but there's there's certain defining characteristics, right? Because you see, uh, SME to me is is a, you know uh, is the backbone of an economy, any country's economy. And all the bankers are chasing you, uh, right? They they trying to offer you uh, products now, right? Yeah, uh, true. true one, right? True. Very true. <laughs> the, the the mindset of SME is depending on where they are in that SME stage. FM, SME has got many stages of life. Yep. Yeah. The lifespan. The uh-huh. lifespan of SME. Mm-hmm. Because if you look at any conglomerates, will have to begin from SME. That's right. Yeah. Unless it's an inherited business. That's right. Okay. So the mindset of the SME, uh, very important as far as I see it, I generalize is they are, they have a very long, very strong survival rate. Ah, survival number one number priority. One, number priority. Don't go out of business. Don't, Don't run out of money. Ah, stay. So they. So with this survival rate, it 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 it, uh, it depicts or it defines what they need to do. Okay. I see. Ah. Okay. There's, so, there's something there. Okay. Mm, there's something there. So with that, it de- if you need to define something to do, then, and it depends on individual SME owners really. How do they want to? Proceed with ensure the, survival. Ensure survival. So I will take it from myself. Okay. I have my own intrinsic values of how I define my my journey. Uh, if you ask me, twenty three years ago, Adrian, will you be doing two hundred and the uh, one hundred and fifty million ringgit turnover? I will tell you, I wouldn't even dream of ten million. Yeah. Because when we first started, we were only doing ninety nine thousand ringgit, and it was like a year shit, It yeah. was so difficult. Yeah. Your second year was a million ringgit. Every year we've been jumping quantum leap. So you ask me, I'll tell you, Amal. But because the way that we have done it, we we put in certain efforts, certain things that we do, it, it actually define the whole journey of the company. Not not me alone. Eh? It is a combination of everybody's effort. Uh, uh, no, but you, you mentioned something very important. The importance of survival, mm. the ins, the survival instinct is uppermost in SME entrepreneurs' minds. Mm. Now that could mean maybe keeping costs as low. I mean, I, I hear stories today, Puppy Bank, right? Yeah. I hear stories that they even count the number of toilet roll they put into the toilets. Mm. Puppy Bank, you know, mm. right? Yeah. And they still have that. They still have that mindset, okay, right? Yeah, it's, but that the one is okay. So cost cost management. Yeah. Cost management. Um, that, 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 that also includes employees, right? And salary, right? Mm, yeah. um, maximizing margin. Max, so it's all uh, I would cash say that, flow management. Uh, but yeah. I would say that it all depends on, you know, it really depends again. No? That's why you cannot generalize the whole thing. But I could, I could say that SME has got very strong survival. It's because mm. that is one of their main main thing that give, yeah. keeps the SME going. 
it all depends on the the individual itself. Like you say, uh, I I do not strongly advocate in cost management like that. Okay, so you're say, willing to pay a guy good good money. Yeah, good money. You, know, you give him shares you, in your overseas subsidiaries. Yes, uh, but doesn't mean that you come to the to the end of the day you give everything away. No, uh, in the world, cheap things are no good. Good things are not cheap. That's right. So just imagine it's a very vicious cycle. If cheap things are no good, good, good things, things are, are not, not cheap. cheap. Yeah. Imagine if, because I'm in a sales line, I must also think of my customers buying from me. Yes, right. If all my customers are going into a cost-cutting measure, I tell you, I can't even bicycle to work because <laughs> I won't make, I won't be making anything. Yeah. We we need to make a reasonable margin and reasonable things. So that's 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 why I say that it all depends on the, on the mindset of the owner of the SME. Yeah. What what they want to achieve, uh, so like you say some. Some of them want to achieve to put food on the table. Yeah. When we first started, I also need to put food on the table. Yeah. So by putting food on the table, we literally move on to doing a lot of other things. Uh, some of the SMEs that you see are very successful ones that have grown through a series of acquisition, grown very big and so on. Now yeah. they are conglomerate listed big companies in Malaysia. But their base started from a very small setup. Yeah, doesn't yeah. matter how big they are; they have to start from somewhere. Okay. And uh, over the series of year, it could be the business that they have done. That's why it took them to where they are. Uh, for for me personally, is we are now looking towards creating another legacy for ourselves mm. that we are able to do some new new things that would would put uh, the company or the group into a different platform or oh, different level. Okay. So personal note now, I think we've talked about this before. You want to leave a legacy for the children, right? And leave children and, uh, and all family. my partners, yeah. All, Every, all family, yeah. Uh, leave them something so that they wouldn't suffer or they wouldn't encounter hardship in in one 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 day when you're gone, right? Mm. Right. I th- I think this is correct, right? No, they, so uh, something along those lines. Something like, but they're not. But you 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 want you have a, a mindset of bequeathing something to them, right? Mm. So then they will never they will never suffer in future, lah. Mm. Is that right? Uh, in the world, half half, half, half right. Uh, yeah. Because I say that creating a legacy is I, I don't see as my own f- kids or my own family or or the it's the family of everyone the that's in the group, in your the ecosystem, in the ecosystem. Your staff and yeah, the staff staff and everyone. Okay. So yeah. when you create a legacy for that, everybody is part of that equation. Yeah. Everyone is important in that equation. But to center on your, also, cho- on your mm-hmm. on your children, because once you go public, you'll still control a good share of your business, right? Now my question to you is this: because one of the curses um, of the family business is the three, the three, three generation, generation curse, right? yes. Founders start the business, children enjoy the business, but not so hardworking, not so entrepreneur anymore. Entrepreneurial. Mm-hmm. Third generation got no idea what the founder was like. Really, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. just spend all the money. Yep. Yeah. I so, so does that enter your equation when you think about it? Because, I mean, when the Western entrepreneur like the Warren Buffett, Warren Buffett doesn't leave his children any money. Mm. You know, he he just his his children got no money one. Or he's kept all the money. He's yeah. given half his money right to Bill yep. Gates, right? Yep, yep. So how do you? So it's, that? it's all it's all uh, it's all very different. I think uh, Western mindset or you know philanthropists are different. They how they do it. Uh, I I don't. I'm not in that league yet. I, I, I no, maybe but, I will but, be. But the, but the principles okay. are the same, the same right? Yep. Huh. The principles are the same. Huh. Uh, I we we would. We actually have our own family office or family estate okay. where we define the the the, 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 the estates of uh, how the money. Yeah. So, in, so in it's, it's the it's the actually is controlled by uh, the estates itself. Okay, whatever. so the the longevity of the money is insured, lah. Insured, yes. I we see. are we're hoping to do that, okay. and uh, we we actually establish a you know our own. Uh, yeah, because in Penang there's also. Family, rich families yeah. that have been rich for eight generations, and yeah. and they still continue. And they still continue. Yeah, because you don't get, but they don't get the money, right? Yeah. They only get a little bit, yeah, and then the dividends. That's right. So that's what that's what we're hoping to do. Because, uh, for my case, or what I do not want to, to to create what we call a lifestyle for them that you know that they only need to do things. Then they get lazy and complacent, right? So mm-hmm. they, they they still need to work towards a certain thing. Yes, maybe their journey in life will be slightly easier, but they still need to contribute towards the betterment of maybe the continuity of the company or the betterment of whatever lifestyle they have. Do they talk do you talk to them about business? Yeah I do. I do. Yeah. Are your children gonna follow you into the business? Yes, my my kids are. I'm hoping yeah. to. Yeah. Cool, cool, yeah, right? Cool. Man. <laughs> hey it's a real 
uh, honor and privilege to talk to you and um, thanks thank for you doing very this, much man. thank you very much I I hope uh, you know uh, I get the opportunity again five years from now oh, no, <laughs> not five years not <laughs> next year <laughs> five from now where we are able to to do certain thing different then maybe the journey is different because yeah, we more be, life uh, lessons right yeah, more impo- I, I, as far as I'm, I'm concerned is life is life is very fragile it is it is so we need to make sure that we max the yeah, happiness yeah you yeah. know, being happy monetary cannot it's not exchange. enough right carpe diem man yeah. seize the day yeah you need to you need to actually seriously be happy it doesn't matter whether you have one dollar in your pocket even buying a piece of bread with 50 cents you, you, won't, you need to be happy in order to to bring you to the next day that's right man mm. hey thanks thank you very much for your time and congratulations on this. Uh, oh, yes. You're now a, um, <laughs> an established uh, cover magazine model. Yeah. <laughs> what, what? First edition of the year, so 2019 right. is a good year. Very fortuitous. Mm-hmm. Yes. Thanks, man. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Cheers.